Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to my story. You know how I like to do that. Um, in episode six of my story, I talked about how I almost married the wrong girl. And now I want to talk about what happened after that, which basically led to my YWAM experience, which led to like a huge, pivotal, the most pivotal, probably direction change in my life. So stay tuned. So I knew the Lord was getting ready to move me. I knew it. Once I got out of that relationship with that girl and that ended and I just pretty much ceased contact with her. For me, I was like in a place where I was like, you know what, Lord? I am really, really done. Listen, guys, I was only three years old in the Lord, and I was really done with church. <laughs> I was done with going to church, sitting in a seat, listening to some guy talk, doing the songs and all that, just that whole church life. And it was like there was a part of me, a huge part of me, that was like, is this it? I mean... What I experienced in my in my salvation story in my episode one, that kept going on for three years. And I would have more fun and more interesting times, more excitement in just my relationship with God and other people that I was involved with. But then going to just going to church was like it was so, 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 so irritating. It grew to be really irritating because it was the same thing every single week. And I was like, man, and I wasn't asking God to get me out. He just knew my heart and where I was at. And I was just like, I, from the moment I came to know the Lord, I wanted to just tell people about this awesome person that I met, Jesus. He is real. Did you know Jesus is real? That was my heart at the time. I'm like, I want, I want to, everyone to know. I want everyone to know this. And so taking all that together and the fact that God knows everything and he's got a perfect plan for every single life that comes to him, even for those who don't, he's still got a plan for you. You just got to come connect with him and get connected with it, you know? And so I knew pretty much at, after that three year into, into my fourth year, I just knew, I was like, I am getting ready to go somewhere. I just felt it in my spirit. It wasn't like God said hey, you're getting ready to go somewhere. It wasn't like that. I just knew like, man, I am getting ready to go somewhere. I feel it in my spirit. Something's getting ready to happen. But I didn't know. So I was just waiting for the Lord and I was talking to a couple people about it and saying, man, I really wanna do something else with my life in Jesus besides just go to church. Ugh! Who wants to just do that, you know? So long story short, this guy came to our church who was supposed to, who was, who was from YWAM, right? And when I, when a friend of mine, a friend of mine at the time, um, told me about YWAM, I was like, oh, it just showed me all the pamphlets and stuff. And I was like, whoa, this sounds awesome. This sounds like what I want to do. Youth with a mission. We're going to take you, we're going to train you up, and we're going to send you out to different parts of the world to, you know, preach Jesus to people who have never heard him. Yes, that's for me. I hear you, Lord. I received the call. And and so this guy came to our church who I knew was going to be from YWAM. And I was like, all right, man, I am ready to go. I'm ready to do this. And so I was expecting this guy to show up and talk about YWAM, right? But he didn't. Oh, my gosh. This is the most amazing part of this part of the story. He came and talked about the Father heart of God. And it was the most, the most dynamic message I've ever heard in my life up to that point. Because up to that point, it was all about the importance of worship and what does praise mean and humility and all these different teachings, which are good. Don't get me wrong. Those are all good and necessary. But I had never heard of God as my father until that guy from YWAM came and said that message in the church I was going to at the time and I was like wow it revolutionized my entire 
outlook on God because up to that point, he was just Jesus, my savior, my master. I'm his servant whom, you know, I obey him and he tells me what to do and I do what he says, right? But at that moment, it was like, whoa. It was almost like I'd been living in this corner of the basement of this three million square foot mansion. <laughs> and it was like this door was opened to realize like, wow, bro, you've got all of this available to you. Why do you just see God this way? And I don't know, there was just so much that happened in there. I could make several videos on just what happened when I heard this message. But when I heard this message, my heart just dropped everything it was doing. And I was like, I'm going wherever to wherever that guy just came from. That's where I'm going. And I knew in my spirit, like I knew like this is where I'm supposed to go. Eventually what ends up happening is I accepted like, okay, I'm gonna go to this, this YWAM place in Arkansas of all places, really? That's not on your dream list of vacation spots. But but I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna go. And then it was like, well, this is how much it's gonna cost. It's gonna cost $3,000 just to do your discipleship training school, affectionately known as DTS. And I was like, wow, you might as well have said to me, it's gonna cost you $13 billion because that was like a lot of money back then. And I was like, and I just, but at the same time, all these obstacles in my way, I felt like the Lord was like, you, I want you to go there. This is really what I want you to do. So I accepted this call to go to YWAM and oh my goodness, unleashed upon me was the biggest spiritual attack I had ever faced up to that point. I'd known the Lord. I knew what spiritual attacks were like. I knew when the devil was messing with you and all that. But this was an all-out siege against me to not go. And at the time, I didn't really realize, like, hey, man, then I should definitely go in that direction since the enemy's trying to get me to not go. I was totally bailing out. I was like, I called YWAM two times and said, you know what? I don't think I'm going to be able to come. I'm all bummed out. And I could, you know, you can just feel the demonic presence just pressing me down and just I felt it and I didn't understand it at the time you know I, I didn't have full understanding that that's what was going on but I knew it was not right but at the same time when you're in the midst of that and the thick of that sometimes you think well man maybe God doesn't want me to go or maybe God doesn't want me to do this thing or whatever and to the degree that I was sleeping I had pet ferrets right and they were down at a cage at the end of my bed. And I'm sleeping on my side. And it was, it was the weirdest thing because, and I don't know how to really describe this, so I hope this comes across okay, but I'm sleeping and it's like I was dreaming, but I really wasn't dreaming. You know, I was like kind of like in that in-between place where weird spiritual things happen. I felt like one of my ferrets jump onto my bed and but like in my mind I could see it coming up to me, right? I'm laying on my side like this and it's coming up to me. The only problem is it was all black with these yellowish eyes and it came up to me and right away I knew like, oh man, that's not, that's not one of my ferrets. <laughs> and my body completely froze and I could not move. And this thing came up and it sniffed my lips. I could feel its cold, wet nose on my lips. And and I mean, I was completely freaked out like I have never been freaked out before, because I knew this was a demon. And it touched my lips, but as soon as it touched my lips, it like jumped back and like took off. And right away, my eyes opened and everything is crystal clear and the first thing I do is I jump up and I look down and both my ferrets are in their little hammocks completely asleep. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. The devil does not want me to go to YWAM. <laughs> and long story short, man, I just, I plowed through and I ended up going to YWAM. And, uh, but I still hit a few bumps along the road on the way. In my next video, I'll kind of give you like a part two 
to how I got to YWAM. And I'm going to share with you some of the promises that God gave me before I went to YWAM that are still true to this day. They still are true. Like some of the things that God told me are, are just awesome. So I hope you guys will come back and watch the next video tomorrow. So subscribe to the channel, like the videos, leave me some comments, and until then, uh, I will see you guys later. My story. Coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it.